learning six. Last week we talked about one of the four families, the string instruments. This week we're going to go off into one of my favorite families. This family can play all kinds of styles from jazz to some kinds of rock that I listened to as a kid. Um, so many things, of course, classical and in the orchestra, marching bands. We're going to talk about the brass family. Not only is it one of the most diverse groups of instruments, but it also is the easiest. So let's get this easy family out of the way and have a little fun. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, let's just dive in because this is probably going to be the quickest one because it's the easiest instrument family. So, next week's going to be a little more challenging. Are you ready? Listen carefully. There are four instruments in this family. Trumpet, tuba, trombone, and the French horn. Got it? Let's say them together. Trumpet, tuba, trombone, and French horn. Now, like we did last week, let's go ahead before we hear them and put them in order of pitch. So look at them really carefully before I take them away. Ready? Look at them. Look at their sizes. Think of what's gonna be the highest and what's gonna be the lowest. Okay, you ready? Here we go. So, which is going to have the highest pitch? Meaning, which one is the smallest? If you said trumpet, you are correct. The trumpet is the smallest. Now I'm gonna be honest, by looking at the other three instruments, trying to find the next one isn't very easy at first glance. But which one's the lowest? Which is the biggest? Tuba is correct. So tuba is the lowest. So we have the highest and we have the lowest. Now for the middle two. Now looking at them, they look like it's hard to tell, right? Like the French horn looks kind of smaller because the trombone looks really long. But if you were to uncoil the French horn, okay, carefully, it would be very long. So it's going to have a lower pitch than the trombone. So look at it carefully. What would go after the trumpet? You said trombone, you're right. So it goes trumpet, trombone, French horn, and the tuba. We got it? Pretty simple by looking at it. See? We're moving right along. Now, stay tuned to hear the number one most important thing in this video. Okay, last week I told you that families in the orchestra are grouped by how you play them. That is so important. If you can remember that, the rest of it's easy. I feel like that's that big thing in our head because we want to remember how they look because they're shiny. But I'm gonna teach you one next week that's gonna confuse you. So don't think of how they're how they look. And I know it's hard because the strings look alike and then these look alike, but next week is going to throw your brain crazy. So only think of them as grouped by how you play them. So the brass instrument, super easy. It's one way, you ready? It's very important to know exactly how. You buzz air through a mouthpiece. You buzz air through a mouthpiece. You can't blow through it because it won't make any sound. You have to actually buzz your lips together 
on the mouthpiece to make sound. Kind of like a raspberry, but not like blowing a raspberry. <sighs> let me let my friend show you exactly how to do it. Hey, Here we go. Let's blow a raspberry. What? No, really. <laughs> let's hear how that sounds on the mouthpiece. <laughs> I think we need a little bit more work to refine our raspberry into the perfect buzz. So how do we turn this <laughs> into this? <laughs> So to refine our raspberry, we need to tighten our lips and keep the corners of our mouths down. Like a group of fish. So we need to go from this to this. Let's hear how that sounds on the mouthpiece. Now you get it? You have to buzz the air through the mouthpiece. You can go to YouTube and search The Brass Teacher or look under my subscriptions for more videos with her. Super cool, right? Now, let's talk about the parts of the brass instruments. Okay, now let's label the parts of a brass instrument. They all have one part we've already talked about that you have to buzz your ear through. What is that called? A mouthpiece. So all brass instruments have a mouthpiece. All brass instruments have a bell. The bell is really important and it's not like a ding, ding, ding bell. It's a bell as in the shape. So the shape, it has to be like a cone, just like when you're outside. Don't do this inside. Don't call me right now. When you're outside and you're yelling and they can't hear you, sometimes you do this to your sound because the sound waves bounce off your hand, making it louder and more direct. So the bell on a brass instrument kind of takes the vibrations and moves them together, making it louder and a better sound, okay? So, we have a mouthpiece and we have a bell. All four have those two parts, okay? The next part, three of them have a valve, have valves, and one has a slide. Which one has a slide? Which one look different, do you remember? The trombone has a slide, which we'll talk about later and you're actually gonna see a video of it. So, the slide is super cool, but you have to move the trumpet forward and back a certain distance for each of the pitches. A trumpet, a French horn, and a tuba have valves that you push down playing different pitches. So, the three parts of brass instruments are mouthpiece, bell and then either valves or a slide got it so each time we talk about instrument we'll label the parts and we'll get to hear it and then we'll move on are you ready we're knocking this out Woo! here we go okay the first and the highest pitch brass instrument is the trumpet Absolutely. So let's go ahead and label the trumpet really quick. We have a mouthpiece, we have valves, and the bell. Got it? Now, on my wall in my classroom, as you leave the room, there's a very famous trumpet player. Remember his name? Now, if you're in third, fourth, or fifth grade, you should know his name. But if you're not, I do a lesson every other year on him. So you'll learn all about him next year, okay? So his name is Louis Armstrong. If you're curious about him, there is a Disney movie called Princess and the Frog. And there is a big crocodile named Louis, who they actually kind of played off of Louis Armstrong. So you probably know more about him than you thought you did. Now, let's go ahead and hear a clip not from that movie, but of someone playing the trumpet. Here we go. I 
like showing you clips of non-classical pieces to kind of show you that these instruments aren't just in the orchestra, they can be played all over the place. So that group is called DF Trumpet. So if you go to my YouTube channel, go to YouTube, you can type in DF Trumpet to see more really cool pop songs that they played with their trumpets. So one instrument down, three more to go. Next up, what is it? The trombone. So let's go ahead and label the parts. You ready? On a trombone, remember this is the one that's a little bit different, but it still has a mouthpiece, bell, but instead of valves, it has a slide, right? Well, I found the coolest video where a man named Manuel put a GoPro on the end of his trombone. And a trombone does what? Right? So you're gonna get to watch a very famous song on edge of his trombone. So ready, buckle up, and let's hear this next song. Do you know that song? Name the movie. If you said Star Wars, you're correct. So how cool is that? And that kind of gives you an idea that a trombone is special because it has a slide. Got it? Let's just keep it moving. We have two down, two more to go. And the third instrument is the French horn. You got it. I always think of like a French braid or a French twist because it's all kind of tangled up inside. So let's label the parts. You ready? We have the mouthpiece, the bell, and this goes back to the original, right? It has valves. Got it? So mouthpiece, bell, and valves. Now let's go ahead and head on over and listen to another pop song played on the French horn. right? So that group or that man, his YouTube channel is Porno Tapo. So you may have saw at the very beginning of the video, um, go to my YouTube channel and I actually subscribe to him so you can go and watch him play all kinds of different French horn songs that are like pop songs. Kind of cool, right? So that's the French horn. Well, really, I'm, you know what? If I had a way to get you prizes, we I give them all out. So we have the trumpet, we have the trombone, the French horn, and last but not least, probably like the coolest sounding instrument. What is it? Let's see. Last but not least, the tuba. It sounds like the lowest instrument in the orchestra, but it's not. We're gonna find out what that is next week. But in this family, it is the lowest instrument. So let's name the parts. Here we go. First, we have a mouthpiece, and then a bell. Then, this one is like the French horn, like the trumpet. What does it have? Valves, great job. Now, I wanna show you um, a video. Now, I have to tell you, it's really hard to find like a melody of a song on the tuba, because the tuba kind of plays the foundation of the song. Uh, just like the bass guitar doesn't always like play a lead line or like a melody line that you can sing along. They kind of keep it going. So these was the easiest I could find this video that has little short clips of um, some melodies. So I'm going to play you a couple of them, but it may not be the actual melody. It could be the part that is underneath the singer. It's kind of that I love. 
how the basses sound. The bass guitar, I told you last week, the, the big string bass. I love the tuba, it just kind of like keeps the song going. So, are you ready? Here we go. See? Super cool. So, head on my channel and you can see where I subscribe to a channel called Middle School Band. Um, he does tons of different songs with the tuba and other instruments. So, another link you can go check out. So we've done all four instruments. The trumpet, the trombone, French horn, and the tuba. What could be next? Maybe all together? Hey, the kids at school love you. You want to give them a high five? Sit. High five. Woo! They love you too. Do you want to give a high five, Marley? High five? No. Marley doesn't give high fives. Now let's put it all together. I know their families are all in the orchestra. I think it's important that you hear classical music, but I also think it's super important that you know there are different styles besides just orchestra pieces that these families can play. And the brass probably plays the most like variety of music that you may not even think about. Are you ready? Now there's more than just the couple I'm gonna show you. Like I could really do a whole huge video, but since the next one's gonna be a little bit longer, I wanna make this one shorter. Are you ready? So the brass family, let's first go ahead and head over and hear one more classical piece, but it's super cool. Are you ready? That was played by the Canadian Brass Band, and you can go on my YouTube channel, look under subscriptions, and I have subscribed to their channel. So you can go finish watching that piece or go watch other pieces. Now, one of my favorite styles is jazz. I think jazz gets the biggest like um, misunderstandings about it, right? You think of jazz as that like boring stuff on the elevator, but jazz is so much more than that. And I used to do a huge unit on all different styles of jazz because there's a lot of different styles. But today, I want to share with you a very important style of jazz in New Orleans. New Orleans is the birthplace of jazz, and this jazz takes marching band music and jazz music, puts it into one. If you've ever been to Disney World and you've been on Main Street, a lot of times you'll hear this music. Also, in The Princess and the Frog, they play this style of music as well. So let's watch this Dixieland jazz band as they walk down the streets of New Orleans. I know, I feel like I tease you, I show you a little bit, but it's good. You get a taste of it, and then if you want to explore more about it, you can. If you don't, but you've heard it, that's all that matters. Remember, the stuff I show you, I'm not asking you to love. I'm asking you to respect it, appreciate it, and know more about it, right? So, last but not least is the Riot Jazz Band. I found this group, and they are so cool. They actually perform together on Zoom videos, which this this one I'm going to show you. The joke is it's a quarantine Zoom video. You'll see some of them Lysoling stuff. They're kind of funny. So um, I'm going to show you part of this. But if you like this, go to my YouTube channel and find Riot Jazz Band. And you'll see a whole bunch of different videos of them playing together on like a Zoom kind of platform. So here is the Riot Jazz Band. <laughs>
he's got a taste of a whole bunch of different styles of music that the brass family can play. Hopefully you now know the parts of the instrument, how they're played, what their names are, and kind of how they sound. So, proud of you. Now, next up, let's add to our cards. Today we're going to add six new note cards to our stack. Brass Family, Buzz Air Through Mouthpiece, French Horn, Trumpet, Tuba, and Trombone. Pause the video now so you can create these note cards or have a parent help you out. When you are finished, you can put them in order by their sound. What has the highest pitch to the lowest pitch? Then add them to the other stack of cards from last week. Now mix your string and brass instruments in a stack. You can then start to separate them into their correct families. Each week we will add more instruments with more families to create a more challenging game to help you review these families. Don't forget to include how the family is played as well. This is the most important part to grouping instruments in the correct family. Have fun! Okay, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. We did it. One more family down. This should be a review to you. If it's not, that's great. You're going to learn a little bit better. You're going to really get it in your head. So when we come back to school next year, or you go on to middle school and you decide to play in the band, you know your instrument families, your instruments at the back of your hand. And plus, this kind of knowledge can be used for the rest of your life. If you hear a song on the radio, you can go, that sounds like a trumpet. Or, wow, that instrument, like, so is that a string instrument? Like, you can totally use information for the rest of your life. So something that's good and fun, and you learn different styles of music, maybe there was a band you heard today that you want to kind of learn more about. But there is one composer I want to touch on for you guys before we go on. Are you ready? He's an American composer. He's on my wall in my classroom. He was known as the March King. Starting to ring a bell. You know what I'm talking about? He conducted the U.S. Marine Band. He invented the sousaphone, not a very creative name at all, because his name is John Philip Sousa. Don't forget that name, super important. So remember, John Philip Sousa is the March King. He invented a marching band tuba that gets wrapped around you so you can march better with it. Um, we did a lesson in class, so I'm not going to go through a whole like lesson with you. But review him, kind of remember him. Don't forget his name, very important man to our American history and to music, especially the Brass family. So, there's one more thing before we leave. I'm so proud of you. Now, really quick, if you didn't see it last week, there is a post on your team's page of a little miniature Flatmus Browning. Feel free to print her out or just put her on your phone and then have your parents take a picture of you hanging out with Miss Browning. You could be eating your breakfast with me or you could be outside. I love being outside. You could be playing with me. Be creative, be silly, and take a picture with flat Miss Browning because I'm lonely. I got my dogs. Mr. Browning works all the time. I miss you. So at least I know by seeing a picture of how flat Miss Browning is having a good time during social distancing. So have fun with it, be creative, take a picture and either email me or post it to our Teams page. I'll save it, and maybe you'll see the pictures really soon. Mm. Anyway, remember guys, I love you, and your day is what you make it. Don't forget to head on over to Quaver to do a short five-question assessment to let me know how much you remember from this lesson.